and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and if you happen to catch the mystery craft along earlier this month, Kim hosted a really fun project. I've never participated in a mystery scrap or or anything like this before and it was a lot of fun. So what I, this is the card that I made. Um and the first one that I made and it's a really awesome design so at the end of the event not only do you have a beautiful card that you can then use but you also have a really nice fun fold that you can replicate the design of over and over again so I thought it was so much fun I decided that I'm gonna do it again and in case you missed the event I'll share with you all of the dimensions so that um and the event I think the event page will still be on the Artful Angel um Facebook group so I'll link to that at the end of this and if you've never participated in a mystery craft along basically um, it's really fun. So you don't know the end result of what you'll be making until you're completely done making it. And it's an hour long event. Before the event goes live, there's actually a supply list and cutting guide. So you know exactly what all you'll need and you can prepare that all in advance. And that's what I've done already here. So this first piece here, for example, is our card base. And you start off with five and a half by 11 inches and along this 11 inch side you want to score at three quarters of an inch on both sides so that's three quarters of an inch is your first score line then your second score line is going to be at eight and one quarter so that gives us uh, once you've um, uh, folded and burnished along those score lines you get this sort of gate fold here so um Throughout the hour, um, after you've prepped all of your pieces, hints and clues will be revealed as to what your next step is. So um, next on our cutting guide is two pieces that are cut to two and three quarters of an inch by five and a half. And our first step is actually going to be to go ahead and glue um, those pieces down onto this gate. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the fun thing about this is that everybody's going to choose different colors. Everybody's going to choose different focal images, different sentiments. And Kim even mentioned during, um, beforehand in the supply list that you can always use your, um, nested shape dies if you want instead of actually you know just doing these as straight cuts and so um, that might be something that is a little bit different between everybody's um, final project so I think that's part of the fun of it is that one you don't know you don't know what you're gonna be making um, unless you're really just good at guessing and two um everybody's makes are going to be slightly different at the end of the day so it's exciting to see everybody's project at the end of it and of course by by the end you'll also have a really cool fun fold that you can just add to your um repertoire and so that is that piece. Then we need two pieces that are cut to three quarters of an inch by two and three quarters of an inch. And I chose to use the same color here because I have the advantage now that I'm doing this a second time around of knowing, you know, where that piece is going to go. Then we have... Um, these pieces here. So technically this should be um, cut from pattern paper, which I've done, but it should technically be um, two and a half by two and one quarter. And then this piece should be two and a half by three. Now, 
I was trying to use up some scraps because I thought they would go really well. So these aren't quite exactly the size that I, uh, that was prescribed. And that's the other thing, even with anything, um, whether it's a card sketch or something like this, even though we're given dimensions, we can always have the freedom of changing things up a little bit, right? So, so that's what I've done here is using what I have and trying to be sort of efficient with, um, scraps and, and, so and I think a, a design like this is great as a scrap buster because, you know, you do have sort of these smaller pieces that are great for um, using up those, those smaller scraps. And again, having the benefit of doing it once, I kind of know that there's going to be this strip here that's going to cover the seam. So if I can't get this pattern paper to exactly fill the hor um, this vertical space, then I will make up for it with those pieces that go between the two pattern papers. And I just decided to use some of my glitter cardstock here just to bling it up a little bit. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to butt this up here. I'm going to actually um, line this up and this is a little bit off. So let me go ahead and trim this. So I don't know how often Artful Angel will be hosting these mystery craft alongs. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll have uh, more of them because I, I really thought it was fun. Um, just something different to do. A fun way to kind of spend an afternoon with other crafters. And, and the thing is, since um, it's, it's being hosted and it's being led. Um, if you do get stuck and you don't know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, um, you can kind of always chat in the group. And uh, Kim, who hosted this one, um, or led this one, will kind of post additional hints and clues uh, for anyone who needs it. Okay, so I want to make sure that these are the correct width. We go so I want it like that but I want this to have sort of the same amount of border going all the way around and I'll fill in that center with those additional little strips and um, probably some love from Lizzie's pinstripe stickers as well because whenever I'm using different pattern papers I do like to make sure that um, just that edge of where they meet up is a little bit, I feel like it gives it a little bit of a cleaner finish if I um, put a little bit of that love from Lizzie's. Um, and what's funny is I'm so in the habit of doing that, um, that I did it um, automatically. And uh, before I got to this step of putting this piece in here, and so uh, it was, Again, it's one of those things where you don't know what you're making until you've made it. So that caught me by surprise a little bit, but I adjusted, worked with it, and it turned out great in the end, I think. This happened to have a bit of double-sided adhesive. So um, the stamp set that I'm working with today is... Um, a continuation of the Savannah the Sloth series. So it's illustrated by Dustin Pike and um, and there's a whole series of her kind of going on different adventures, going away to camp, um, just the sort of fun things that you might do on summer vacation. So the set I'm working with is called S'more Wishes, and it's all about camping activities and um, just adventure in general. See how once I have this here, 
you you can't tell that these didn't go fully. Now what I like to do is try to level this off. So what I'm gonna do is cut just some scrap paper and I have a piece of scrap left over here and it doesn't have to be neat or tidy. I just wanna I just wanna make it a little bit more level since I don't have these two papers aren't coming together and and meeting. So just get a little a little bit of a scrap there. Put a little piece of scrap on the other side. It just helps to level things off a little bit. Uh, I want to make sure I keep the the real pieces. All right, so we'll get these little filler pieces attached. And what I'll probably do is come back in with some love from Lizzie's. I think I, I'm um, pretty sure I have some silver. I don't know if I have gl the glitter variety, but I might put a touch of the silver on the bottom here just to bring some of that down. Add a little bit of extra bling and probably doesn't even need to be the glitter variety. I think it could be um, even maybe a darker pink might work. And so try to do this as quickly as possible since I am filming this in real time at the moment. Um, and sometimes I film in real time, but I um, end up speeding it up just because I don't want any of my videos to be too terribly long. And so uh, sometimes that's why you'll see videos where I'm gesturing a lot and it seems like I'm, I'm talking. And that's because I am. Um, but then the voiceover doesn't 100% match <laughs> what my hand gestures are, are doing. Now you know why that happens. It's when I think that I think something's gonna be a lot quicker and so I record it and, and do the voiceover in real time. But then at the end of the day, it ends up being twice as long as I think. And I don't want to make you have to suffer through super long videos. Especially for single card designs. So then we've got um, our gates pretty well decorated at this point. And gonna open this up so that it's easier to see and this is one of those things where oops in my in my rush I didn't put this back in go. this is one of those things where um I think originally this is probably placed somewhat differently but I'm gonna work with it for my design and where I've made some adjustments. So here's my original one. You can kind of see the original placement was a little bit higher up or should have been a little bit higher up, but not, not too worried about that. And I'm not worried that these aren't meeting up exactly. Normally I would be really um, particular about those lining up exactly uh, straight across, but again, Hindsight of having done this once before, I know I know that seam is going to get covered, so I'm not too terribly worried. Okay, so then we have that uh, our gates done. Now let me go ahead and get this part assembled. So um, this square piece here is cut to four and a half by four and a half. This pattern paper piece is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then the next um, square is cut to two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then I've got my Savannah image who will sit in the center of all of that. So um, this is one of those places where Kim mentioned um, in the supply list ahead of time where if you want to use some nested shape dies 
totally have the freedom to do that. And so, you know, maybe you want to change this up and have it be circular or oval. Um, always, always a fun option to, um, to use different, different shapes in the center here. I do like that it's a square because if you're using something directional, <laughs> you can just go ahead and put it down, but still rotate it to whatever the correct orientation is, um, with other shapes that may not be quite as possible. So get this centered as much as possible. I like to just eyeball things. Um, okay, uh, so I burnish that really well and you'll see every time I lay down any glue I like to use this ergonomic bone folder to do uh, to burnish so that the adhesive, whatever type of adhesive I happen to be using, makes really nice solid firm contact. Now the question is, so if I do apply some of my uh, pinstripe stickers. The beauty of knowing where the design is headed is that since this is only going to get applied to the left half, I'll want a full strip going across here because you'll ultimately be able to see the full strip. But on this side, I just need to cover that little um, bit that's visible. So I'm going to go ahead and um, grab my stickers. As you can see, I have quite a lot. So a couple of options. I have I have some blues that might work with this. So I could use blue to bring a little bit of that blue down. And this is a nice blue and silver. Um, here's another one that's blue and silver. Um, could go pink, do a matte pink. Uh, here's a, let's see, this is probably the hardest part right now. Um, so there are some blue options. I, I think I'm gonna, ooh, oh, this is gonna be perfect. I think this is what I'll do. A little bit, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Oh, well, there's this too. Okay, so there's, uh, if you've ever shopped Love from Lizzie's pinstripe stickers, there's glitter and then there's moon dust. And moon dust is more of a fine glitter and this is more of a, a chunkier glitter. And I kind of think, I think this is gonna match that better. So I'm going to go ahead and use this and super easy to use. So I have all these leftover bits here, which I think are going to be, oh yeah, that's totally going to be long enough. So that's pretty much the perfect, wow, I don't even have to trim this one. This is why I keep all of these little, <laughs> all these little, little uh, segments. And then this little piece is going to be perfect for the other end. Um, in fact, this is probably enough. So get that on there. Save that one. Another day. Let's see, there you go, perfect. Okay, so I've got those assembled, and I kind of like to do this completely um, so that it's nice and flat, and I can burnish it while it's nice and flat, as opposed to putting it onto um, our project straight away. And um, I just think that it's a little bit. Uh, works out to be a little bit of a firmer stick for me. 
So I, I think I'm going to pop Savannah up on a little bit of my um, low profile foam. So I'll just cut off some pieces here. So I really love to use low profile foam, um, especially for things like this where you just want the dimension. You don't really need the um, the spacing. It's more just to have that little bit of extra bit of um, shadow. And because the foam is only one millimeter thick it's not um, it's not gonna pose any issues with postage and having to pay extra because one millimeter is hardly hardly anything so that's gonna that's gonna go through just fine because I think you get um, in the US when you post things um, it can't be thicker than a quarter of an inch and this is very far from a quarter of an inch so um, so that's one benefit. And then um, the other is that it's also pretty economical too, especially when you buy it in sheets like these. So it's um, great for, for that as well. Now a lot of times, even with some of my Connect cards, um, I use this because sliders, for example, they don't need a lot of dimension. They just need a little bit just so that to reduce the friction of two layers of cardstock sort of passing over each other. But especially on a double slider where you need that little bit of dimension on the back and on the front, um, you're going to end up needing two layers of foam. So if you use two layers of pretty thick foam, that's when you might get into the realm of possibly needing to put um, extra postage to mail off. And I, most of the time I, I'm post, I post cards in the mail. So here, um, on the original design, we have this off to the side here, but I might actually, I might actually put this, tuck it in like that. Maybe I'll push this whole design up a little bit just so that we have room for that. And I did make a little bow, so there's still room for that. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. So again, just um, learning, you know, taking what I've learned from the fun fold, from the mystery craft along, and this particular fun fold design, and then adapting it to something different, something fun, and I didn't realize this would go so far. I don't think I put enough adhesive. Okay, so tuck that. Maybe I want a little, yeah, I think I would like it that way. I normally would have added a couple of extra layers below here just to level that out, but didn't remember in time. Now the key here is you only want adhesive on this left hand panel. So what I'm going to do is try to get this um, centered this way. And then holding this tight and um, flipping it to the back, I'll go ahead and draw a line. And basically give myself an arrow so I know which side to put my adhesive. And so I'm going to make sure that I stay just to the other side of that line. 
And if you're worried that the line might be visible when somebody opens the card, then you can always erase this so that the back is nice and neat too. Okay. So, and yeah, I'm going to give myself just a little, little bit of liquid adhesive, a little bit of wiggle room. It's nice to have these pinstripes because I can actually line that up. <laughs> Make sure that it's straight up and down. Okay, I like that. Now since this side is um, got a lot of dimension going on, I'm going to burnish from the underside. And that'll help me give that nice firm solid stick. And then the last thing will be to add this. And I had the benefit of seeing Kim's card. And I really like what she did with the tails. So I'm gonna, gonna attempt to do that. I may not have left myself enough ribbon, but we'll find out. So these are just glue dots. These are half inch. So I feel like it's a little bit too big. So I'm trying to fold it in half. Um, and I want to get it just behind the knot here. So I'm going to tack this down to start. And then Kim did this cool thing of kind of kind of folding folding it like that. So I think what I'll do is use um, Beacon 3 in 1. This is kind of like Fabri-Tac. It's made by the same folks anyways. Don't know if it's the same formulation, but I'm going to use this to tack this down in certain spots and try to give it that sort of wavy There we go, maybe something like that. So that goes outwards. Yeah. So then we tack. Hold it there. And I think I need some on this side. I don't think I needed that glue, so I'll let that dry and I can always rub it off. Nice thing about Beacon is it gives you a lot of open time. So then maybe I'll do something like that. Okay, so let's get
Okie dokie. So there you have it. The final card complete. Not quite completely dry yet, but how fun is that? There's a fun fold. Just a fun little gatefold. Really adorable. So that was what we um, created during the Artful Angel Mystery Craft Along. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing more. So if you haven't joined the group, I'll leave a link to the Facebook Artful Angel Facebook group in the description um, below. And go ahead and join up. And the next time we have a mystery craft along, um, you'll see that announcement and hopefully you can join us. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you liked this card. And if you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.